won the leadership election last year. We came to this very same spot to speak up for the rights of refugees to live in our society. And one of the horrible disfigurements of our society is racism, is intolerance, and the violence that's often associated with it. And sadly, this has increased over the last few days. Can we all agree we are going to unite together as one people, one society, one community to oppose racism? And, and recognise that the grotesque exploitation of workers in zero hours, on zero hours contracts in factories around Britain called out by Dennis Skinner quite brilliantly in the House of Commons a couple of weeks ago shows that we don't need the blame culture we need the unite culture of working together for the social justice to which we all aspire we have a government that is destroying council housing and public sector housing within our society, that is failing and refusing to regulate the private rented sector, that is allowing children to be brought up in insecure, overcrowded, damp, expensive accommodation. We have a government that is giving tax breaks and tax relief to the super rich within our society. that is systematically privatising at least half of our National Health Service. And if you overlay the map of poverty in Britain, one of those heat maps, bright red where it's the poorest, and you then overlaid it with blue dots of where the biggest cuts are taking place, they would be exactly the same. Because that is the priority of this government. So when we contested the Labour leadership last year, it was fundamentally on an economic question. John McDonnell, as our Shadow Chancellor, has called this out and turned our party into an anti-austerity and turned our party into an anti-austerity party. And I'm delighted that she is now the Shadow Secretary of State for Health. Because all these issues have to be linked together, fundamentally, to economic inequalities within our society. Our movement, our Labour movement, was founded on the most immense struggle those that laid down their lives in the 18th and 19th century, those that were gunned down campaigning for the right to vote, those that were gunned down trying to become trade unionists, not just here, but all around the world. It's the spirit of hope or the spirit of despair. Which are we? We're obviously hope, not despair. struggle against racism, those that struggle for rights to be lesbian, to be gay, to be whatever you want to be, those who struggle to achieve those things, those who struggled to gain the right for women to vote, all of those things were gained by struggle and I would want nothing more than our history teaching in schools to so improve that our children understand the rights they have, the rights they enjoy came from those that were we want to live in. I've mentioned refugees, I've mentioned economic injustice, I've mentioned the services that we have. But we also have to think about our natural world and our environment. Either, either we live in the natural world and ex 
except we have to sustain it by defending it or we grotesquely exploit it. You, this is why I was so pleased when John, on the first budget statement that he did, asked for and did an environmental audit of the effect of that budget. So I want to see a government in Britain that does house people, that does protect and defend our environment, that does protect and extend our health service, but also reaches out with attitudes in society. within our society and Diane is very well aware of the importance of how we deal with that. So if I may say so, it's also a question of our own attitudes towards those that are going through stress or crisis, how we change that and recognise that we suffer stress through economic injustice, through inequality, through work, through debt, a whole lot of things. But we have to also think of how we behave ourselves. And so, I just ask you this very carefully and very specifically. When we disagree with each other, as we sometimes do, when we disagree with other people, as we sometimes do, if we hurl abuse at each other, I hurl abuse at you, you hurl abuse at me, I hurl it back, the first two or three times it's quite funny, or can be, the fourth or fifth time, you've totally lost the audience who may have been listening to you in the first place. So, we pursue the politics of justice, of equality, of human rights, of peace around the world, but we also pursue the politics of respect of how we treat each other. greater unity. In that way, we build a unity of people. I do not want to live in a country where there are people sleeping on the streets while the mansions are kept empty. I do not want us to walk away from any international conventions on human rights and replace them with something else. Because to me, human rights are universal, not national. And so the political atmosphere we have is about challenging those orthodoxies. But it's also about challenging an economic orthodoxy that has been on the rampant march for 30 years or more. When Reaganomics took over in the United States, when Thatcher took over in Britain, and destroyed the manufacturing industry and so much of the economic base of our society. The whole agenda was the redistribution of wealth away from the majority to a very small, very wealthy majority, otherwise known as rolling back of the state and rolling back of the role of the community in the provision of services. I don't want to be somebody that says to young people, sorry, you're not going to have it as good as we did because the nation can't afford it. And sorry, your children, our grandchildren, are not going to have it as good as you are because the nation can't afford it. And we then cascade inequality and poverty and debt down the generations. Or are we to say that the brilliance of technology, the brilliance of science, the brilliance of engineering can, should, and must be the tool and the opportunity for the redistribution of wealth. forward to a lifetime of debt in the future. That's why the movement we now have in Britain, the movement for social justice and the movement for equality is so strong, why it reaches out so broadly. Because we learn from each other, because we learn from the values of each other, because we learn from the history of each other, because we learn from the tolerance of each other, for whatever grouping, ethnicity, faith we happen to be. That is where unity comes in, and that is what makes us strong. 
Don't let the media divide us. Don't let those people who wish us ill divide us. Stay together, strong and united.